everybody and welcome to the Tora Jordan Show. I'm your host, Tora Jordan. If you're new here, hey, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, hey, welcome back. Glad to see you. So, we are in October, which means that we're coming up on the holiday season. And I had a couple people ask, um, Tora, how are you going to face the holiday season? Well, a month ago, I would have told you I was going to face it the same way that I faced it last year. Just head on and have my scheduled cheat days and just roll with it. Well, things change, of course. Um, so, how I'm going to face the holiday season this year. Um, while, since I am pregnant, but, you know, my body is running in prime, uh, doing low-carbon keto, uh, you know, but I've eased up on my restrictions for growing baby. Um, I have to be a little more careful because I don't want to cause myself to have a sugar crash like I did the last or like I did a couple weeks ago. So, um, how I'm going to face it this year is, you know, at the pace of what I need to. Um, Somebody asked, you know, were you okay after having your sugar crash out? I said, yeah, I was fine. Everything was fine. Um, just had to get myself back up uh, as far as my blood glucose. And what had happened if, if you missed all that, um, the Thursday after Josh and I took our pregnancy test, I came home. I was so tired. We had been up late. And we had ordered pizza kind of as a celebratory thing. And I had three pieces of pizza and a potato skin and went to bed. And then three hours later, went to the bathroom and discovered that my blood sugar was bottoming out. And it's like, oh my gosh, what's going on? You know, got recovered from that. Uh, went to go see my nurse practitioner and she's like, Tora. Don't overdo it because your body, you know, in ketosis and low carbing is, is saying this is what we need to, this is how we need to function to grow the baby until otherwise advised, gradually increase on those carbs, but just be careful. Okay. <clears throat> so coming up on, uh, Thanksgiving, we have a family reunion with, Josh's side coming up this weekend. Uh, then the next weekend, we have a big church conference. And then the next weekend, we have his niece's wedding. And then the last weekend, we have um, kind of a fall get-together uh, with a couple of our friends. And it's like, okay, I know at those uh, different places that there's going to be a lot of temptations to, you know, just be like, okay you know oh I could have a piece of cake oh I could have this oh I could have that but the way my body's running now I got to be really really careful so more than just facing it like I'm a, a keto cutie or you know a low carb person um I'm gonna face it like I would I would if I was actually a true blown diabetic okay and y'all might be going that sounds so weird but I'm going to avoid the potatoes as much as possible. Sorry about that. Had somebody send me a message. Um, so I'm going to like avoid the potatoes, avoid eating like a lot of bread, avoid pastas and avoid the really sweet desserts. Um, and you might be going to tour. How are you going to do that? Easy. The reunion and our church uh, conference and our friends gathering, they're all potluck. So I will just make stuff that I know I can have and I will... Uh, enjoy those things 
Um, the wedding, I have no idea uh, what is on the menu. However, I will be very careful at what I select. Um, I'm pretty sure there's going to be salad there, so I can have salad. Um, but, you know, just kind of watch what I take or watch what I eat. Um, just as if it was just any other normal day. Um, I'm not going to make a huge announcement. Be like, oh, I cannot eat the di anything that is not diabetic friendly. No. Okay. I don't want that kind of attention. <laughs> I'm just going to enjoy it and live life. Okay. Um, I did have somebody message me and ask me um, if I thought that keto was uh, how was the key to me getting pregnant. I cannot say that keto is the reason why I got pregnant. I cannot say that. Um, all I can say is that by losing weight with, I know with polycystic ovarian syndrome, I was insulin resistant, which meant that my body was used to my insulin level running up here because my blood sugars were running up here. So my insulin was up in order to combat the um, overload of sugar and not necessarily what I was consuming, but my hormones were out of whack. You have to remember insulin is a hormone, you know, just like estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, you know, your adrenal glands, all of that is hormones. And when one hormone is up, that means the other hormones are out of whack. Okay. But because I got my insulin level back down toward normal range, that meant that my other hormones started balancing out, which meant that my system started getting back in line and behaving itself like it should. Okay? Did, did keto, was keto the magic cure to my polycystic ovarian syndrome? No, I will have that for the rest of my life. My, my body will always be prone to getting my, my hormones way out of whack and all over the place. I know that. That's why it's a lifestyle. It's not a diet. Okay? But because, you know, that insulin level got back down into normal range and my estrogen, my progesterone, and even, you know, uh, spoiler alert, everybody has insulin or everybody has estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone in their, in their bodies, whether you're male or female. Okay? It just depends upon how you're you know, whether you're male or female, what is the dominant hormone? Okay. So because my estrogen or my insulin was in line, came down in the line, my estrogen and my progesterone and everything else came down in the line, lined up and things happened. <laughs> um, like I said, I cannot say that keto was the cause of my pregnancy but I can say that it had a hand in it because everything started lining up. Okay. Um, I'm not going to, to tell, sit here and tell somebody, if you want to get pregnant, go on keto. Absolutely not. That is something that you need to discuss with your healthcare provider. Um, my old OBGYN, when he, before he retired, um, he had told, he had encouraged me to try keto and low carb. And then he, you know, he also put me on metformin because he was trying to get those est or those uh, insulin levels down. And that was just not a good mix for me at that time. But doing the keto on my own, things happened. Okay. Um, but like everything else, I'm going to tell you guys, talk to your healthcare provider. Okay. So talk to your healthcare provider. Um, I had another person ask me. <laughs> And they asked me face to face. So this is somebody who is in my life on a daily. Uh, they had asked me, Tora, you, you're in your first trimester. How's that morning sickness going? I don't have morning sickness at this time. Um, I haven't had any symptoms of morning sickness. Now I will tell you this. Eggs stink to me. And you all know, you all have seen me do an egg fast on here several times. Um, I can eat eggs like no tomorrow, but eggs, mm -mm. 
And the bad thing is, is that I'm the, uh, right now I'm the opening cook at work. So that means I'm around cooked eggs all the time. And it's like, okay, they don't smell too good. But they're not making menaches, so we're good. <clears throat> Funny thing is, is that last Saturday, Josh and I went out for our breakfast date for omelets. And I ordered an all-meat omelet, which means that it had bacon, it had sausage, it had ham, it had cheese, rolled up into an omelet. I've enjoyed that omelet, you know, several times. And I was like, okay, this is going to be good. Cut into that omelet, took the first bite, and I'm like, I can't eat the eggs. So I just ate the meat out of the middle, and I gave Josh my eggs. So, yeah, definitely no egg fasts. And definitely no main egg uh, recipes, I guess you could say, like omelets or fried eggs or things like that. At this time, uh, they just don't, they don't taste good to me and they don't smell good to me. So anyway, those are, and fatigue. I, I'm, I'm struggling with that fatigue. So please send your prayers, your well wishes, your good vibes that, you know, this fatigue eases up because I have cut down on my coffee. Um, I was reading in the book, what to expect when you're expecting. And it said to limit your caffeine consumption. So I've, I'm down to one regular cup of coffee a day when I'm used to drinking triple strength coffee in the morning, getting my jolt. And, uh, I'm not using my cafe, uh, protein coffee or protein shake portion uh, just to eliminate as much uh, caffeine intake as I can just because I want to be as healthy as I can uh, during pregnancy. So yeah, that's, that's fatigue and aversion to eggs. That's, that's a lot of my uh, symptoms that and I'm already having like brain fog, which is really weird to me because I'm usually like really sharp really on top of it and it's like I will draw blanks you know just uh so yeah that's that's fun <laughs> so that's how pregnancy's going <clears throat> our first uh gyne our first OB appointment is on October 6th um and we will find out officially how far along we are find out officially what our due date is and find out officially if there's one, two, three, or however many buns in the oven. So, we'll find out officially all of that on Friday, which I will update you all that next week uh, on a video. But yeah, that's how pregnancy's going, and that's how I'm going to face the holiday season, being pregnant and being low-carb and keto. Um, just kind of face it as if I was making a plate for my father-in-law be like, okay, he doesn't need the mashed potatoes. So we're going to go with the cauliflower. Doesn't need the, the, the big, the big roll. We'll go with something else. Okay. So that's, that's how I'm going to face it. So anyway, um, thank you all for, for your comments, for your questions, um, for your well wishes, for your congratulations and all that with, you know, this new turn in our journey. Uh, it's rather exciting for me and Josh. Um, he has been such a trooper on helping me here at the house. Um, he's cooked dinner several times because he, he'll come home and be like, what do you want for dinner? I'm like, I have no idea. Uh, I will have no idea what I want for dinner. So like tonight he made, um, I'm actually filming this on Monday. He made supper tonight and he made um, sauerkraut and knockwurst and he's like try it and if you can't you know we'll figure something else out so he's been a real trooper and a real helper he's he's just over the moon excited just the same as i am so anyway i will keep you all updated as we go through this this uh baby bump journey uh, with pregnancy and going through uh low carbon keto on this portion of the journey so anyway you all are beautiful or handsome just the way that you are. Absolutely just the way that you are. I care for you guys. That's why I 
keeping you updated on how I'm doing. Um, that way that you guys can, I, you know, you guys are made aware because uh, I consider you all my friends. Um, I, I really do care for you guys. Uh, you're not alone when you are facing new adventures in life and trying to figure out how to navigate those holiday seasons that are coming up and trying to figure out how just to navigate life in general. Because, you know, a year ago, I knew I knew my game plan. You know, a month ago, I knew my game plan going into, into the holiday season. Ten minutes ago, I didn't know my game plan. I still don't really know my game plan, but that... That doesn't mean anything, you know. That just means that I got to be a little more creative and a little more adventurous and a little more aware of my surroundings, okay? So you're not alone when, you, when you're facing that, okay? Be kind to yourself and be kind to others, okay? One last thing. Love you!